Mike Rashid, I'm a God. Capital G. He said, I'm a capital G God. Mike Rashid proclaims fearless vision of new religion, crafting the modern Bible. So I seen this clip on TikTok of Mike Rashid talking about he was starting a new religion. It was like a maybe a 30 second clip. And I watched it and he was talking about, you know, it's, it's this whole conversation that we've had multiple times before of this like this little God conversation that we're all gods, that we have this divinity on our own. And you know how they always use that same uh, uh, scripture in the Bible, the like ye are gods and stuff like that. He was using that scripture in order to justify his claims. Now, I think he's going to get a lot more in detail and a lot more in depth into what he's actually building because he's literally building his own religion and making a quote unquote modern Bible, whatever that means. Let's get into it, I guess. I have no better guest to bring on yeah. to basically keep it cool, keep it calm, play the long game than my friend Mike Rashid. Now, before I bring this guy out, okay. let me explain what this guy is. This, I think, how, is this third time of the show? Fourth time of the show? Maybe four. Okay. Third? Mike Rashid. Live like a lion. Yeah. Entrepreneur, businessman, fitness guru. Um, but let me skip the intro. I don't really care about the intro. Let me get to the good part here. Or not the good part, but the part in question. Oh, my gosh. This is, oh my goodness gracious. This is going to be a heck of a video. Let me just say, it's just, just reading the chapters, this is going to be a video. So I'm going right. to ask you a question on Nat. I, I'm Nat's getting a little bit closer to her Catholic faith. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure you have some, some questions here. So I'm taking notes because I'm learning. By the way, we talked backstage just for a little bit, for like five minutes, saw some of your guys. Mm -hmm. We didn't get into any of this. So I'm genuinely yeah. <laughs> learning this for the first time. And right. I'm... I'm all ears, bro. Yeah. Here's my first question regarding that. There's a religion, mm -hmm. right? Then there's people that are like, no, I don't really believe in religion. I'm spiritual. Mm -hmm. Basically, like every girl I've ever dated, I'm spiritual. And then there's like a way of life, right? Religion, spirituality, way of life. What would this be more closely to? It doesn't matter. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter what you call anything. The, the principle behind all are the same. A person that's religious, mm -hmm. a person that's spiritual, mm -hmm. and a person that wants to adhere to a way of life is typically to find some form of salvation, right? Mm -hmm. It's typically to like have a good life. Yep. It's typically to be happy. So I don't care what you call it. It doesn't but matter. The, the thing. <laughs> but but yeah, go ahead. One, one thing, Adam. Sorry to cut you off, but no, good. This is the this is what I want to address. These these are the things that I want to address. Mm -hmm. People are are adhering to ideas and ideas one second i gotta speed this up i'm putting on one two five reality instead of reality right mm -hmm. so when you have yep. a distinction between religion way of life and spirituality you, you're missing the point it doesn't matter what you call it as long as you are doing the things to live a good life you feel me i don't care what you call it yeah mm -hmm. i'd be like oh well that's spirituality like okay you're right mm -hmm. no no that's religion yep you're right as long as you're doing the things, that's all that matters. And when you look at quote unquote religious people, mm -hmm. you don't have that, right? You have people adhering to ideologies based on their interpretation of said scripture. Mm -hmm. There's no nuance, there's no common sense being used. Matter of fact, scripture is at the mercy of each person's interpretation. Just because your pastor said this means X, Y, Z, mm -hmm. it may mean something to you if you read it. Correct. It may mean something to you, different to you if you read it, right? Mm -hmm. Because your understanding of things are going to be different based on what you know, mm -hmm. based on where you are physically, geographically in the world, but also where you are just in your life. Right. Mm -hmm. All of these things matter, but nobody reads. You know how many times people argue with me about scripture? I'm like, I know you don't read it because it doesn't say any of that. Right. Mm -hmm. Or it says this and you leaving this out. So people don't read. People have the idea of religion. People are born into whatever religion. Mm -hmm. And listen, if you're programmed something from birth and they're telling you if you go against it, you know, um, clearly, uh, you, we don't we don't even have to watch the full video in order to understand that this man is being led by the spirit of the Antichrist. We don't we don't have to watch the full video in order to understand that. You know what I think? People they use the Bible 
and they twist the Bible, they manipulate the Bible as a cling to relevance. Think about it like this. How long was Jesus's ministry? How long was Jesus's ministry? Type it in the comments. Type it in the comments. How long was his ministry? Josh, you got banned. You got banned, bro. Anybody else who's going to come in here spamming, you're going to get banned. I'm sorry. You're getting banned. You just got banned, Josh. I'm actually not sorry. How long was Jesus' ministry? Right? And we're still talking about it to this day. Three years. We're still talking about it to this day. To this day, we are still talking about it. Jesus will never not be relevant. He will always be relevant. People want to use the scriptures. They want to use the Bible. They're trying to cling on to relevance. They're trying to create some fame for themselves, some attention, some name. They want the glory. It's a spirit of antichrist. They want the glory for themselves. They want the glory for themselves. And just based on the four minutes we've been watching this video, it's not hard for me to identify that. You burn in hell forever? Mm -hmm. You're like, no, I'm here. I'm here. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So when I was a kid, I had mad anxiety about going to hell. I'm like, yo, huh. I got to ask for forgiveness every five, five minutes. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. so, what, what, was, what was your religion at birth? I'm a Muslim. By, you by were born? Faith. Okay. Yeah. But... I, it was so like it was pushed on me so literally like everything right yeah. and I have friends adult friends that take so many things as literal I'm like mm -hmm. so you mean like literally they're like yeah Aki and I'm like alright that's what's up mm. I'm not gonna argue people off of their, their box yeah. listen it doesn't matter your path is your path and I, I'm not gonna tell anybody they're wrong right so the um, by the way mesmerizing stuff mm -hmm. I I fully agree that there's on one hand an ideologue mm -hmm. you know and on the other hand is sort of a pragmatist Listen, ideologue is like, no, I believe this. And the pragmatist is like, no, nah, this is what we're dealing with right here. Mm -hmm. um, you were born a Muslim. Mm -hmm. You know, I have conversations with whether it's Muslims, whether it's Christians, whether it's Jews. It's like, you know, they all, it's the Abrahamic religions, right? Um, how literal should you take the Bible? How literal should you take mm -hmm. the Quran? So for instance, you know, it's funny because I've never, <laughs> I've read the Torah. Mm -hmm. I had a comment, shout out to Danny back here, who's a, is a, is a, is a follower of, of Jesus is what he calls mm -hmm. himself. Also my friend Ruslan who sent me some, some stuff. You're going to laugh right now. I didn't fully realize that the Bible is just the Jewish Torah with like 200 more pages. It's like I opened it up the Bible mm. um, and it was the first 800 pages. I'm like, yeah, this is this is the Torah. This all the books three of Moses. books. All three books yeah. have the same uh, foundation. Exactly. Yeah. So and then it was just the, the New Te Old Testament, New Testament. Mm. So here's my question. So I would get I would have conversations with people and say, so there's a the story about Jonah and the whale. You know this story? Mm -hmm. That Jonah apparently lived in a whale for a little bit. I'm like, yeah, I don't know. Jonah's hanging out. Okay, in a whale. so I'm asking you this. How literal should you take what does that scripture? Mean? What does that mean to you? When you read that, that story, what did it mean to you? Um that specific story about Jonah and the yeah, whale? Yeah. Uh I'd be remiss to tell you I knew exactly what that story was. Cause once I hear a dude's living out in a whale, I'm like, yeah, hi. Bro. What about you, Nat? Um, I think like you said, it depends on the message and where you're at. You know, for me, I, that story is someone is locked in a space mm. where they're not able to get out. Right. And so that's the base of that story. That's mm. what I get from that. Right. So, and I'm, not, yeah, now I'm sure there's a lot, like we can really have a conversation on what you just said. Mm -hmm. Like, what does that actually mean? Right. Mm -hmm. But that's the key though. That's what no one does. Mm -hmm. They doesn't, no one like uses any logic and any reasoning. Did like what does this it? make sense? I mean, what does this mean? So for instance, Jacob, right? Mm -hmm. He wrestled with the divine figure, right? And he did such a good job, the divine figure anointed him with the name Israel. What does that mean? What does that mean to you? That story? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, mm -hmm. right? Jacob's ladder, mm -hmm. climbed his way to heaven. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it's biblical times um, are the foundation of culture, tradition, life. Mm -hmm. um, in general, here's the way I look at it, to maybe give a macro perspective. Right. Um, you can either get closer to God, closer to the Bible, closer to those stories, or further away. Mm -hmm. What I'm not an advocate of, speaking of ideologues, are extremists. Some people are like, this is the way it is, that's the way it is, it's headed in the book. And the, the, the other extreme is, oh, I don't care about any of that. The Ten Commandments, mm. the rules that we've always abide by, tradition. So for me, it's finding a balance of where this should be in your life. Mm. 
And there's a point, you know, I'm a pretty moderate dude, which we're going to talk a little bit in a sec. Um, I'm sort of always hovering in the middle. I can do this, I can do this. But as you trend a certain direction, like I was trending, I was reading books like Richard Dawkins, mm -hmm. God is not good. I was like, as you go down this path, it's like, how is this benefiting me? Like I see mm -hmm. Bill Maher who does religious lists mm -hmm. and he's like, you know, I don't really hate religion. He goes, hold on, ah, yes I do. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if that helps you. Right. So I'm gravitating a lot more towards belief. Mm -hmm. So the Jacob concept, I don't know how literal I take these things, mm -hmm. but I want to take them a little bit more serious. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how I took it, it was like an internal struggle. Angela, uh, one's Angela you're amazing. Angela, you're amazing. Um, isn't it just like sinful human beings to try to take the word of God and to see how they could fit it into what they want to make it to be? in their life, if that makes sense. It's like, you just wanna take bits and pieces that you think are beneficial. You wanna take bits and pieces that you think are gonna make you more productive. You wanna take bits and pieces that you think are gonna make you more successful or make you a better person, quote unquote. And you wanna apply those principles because those are in the Bible as well. Those principles are there that are gonna make you more productive, more successful, a, a better human being. Those principles are in the Bible. But you don't want to take the carry your cross. You don't want to take the discipline. You don't want to take the crucifying your flesh and not serving two masters, not having one foot in the world and one foot with God. You don't want to take those principles because it requires too much, right? So, I mean, ultimately, you're not going, you're not going to be saved. You're not going to be saved. You're clinging on so much to your life. You don't want to let your life go here on earth. You're clinging on to it so much. You're holding on to it so much that you don't want to let go and have faith that God's got you. Wholly and completely. Because you want to maintain a certain level of control in your life. As opposed to just handing it over to God. And asking him to lead you in whatever direction he sees fit. own personal jihad if you will mm -hmm. of going to war with your lower nature mm -hmm. right and that's a very hard fight it's a divine right. fight right and this man fought it and he was awarded mm -hmm. with with something beautiful right so it's nuanced it's like hmm, what does this mean to me versus it being taken as literal mm -hmm. because here's mm -hmm. the thing these like that like say for instance the bible old testament in particular was written in aramaic a language that no longer exists mm -hmm. in hebrew right pbd actually speaks that yeah Literally. and there is there are no there are no there are those languages, Arabic, there are no direct translations for a lot of the words. Yeah, mm -hmm. a, a lot, lot of gets the lost in translation. No a different. lot of the, the characters in the, in, the, in the words, right? So you're not getting exactly what, whatever they were trying to communicate for one. Mm -hmm. For two, for two, you have what's called canon, the canon Bible, right? Mm -hmm. The canon Bible. This book is supposed to be about Yeshua, right? And I like to use proper terminology because mm -hmm. it, it matters, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know who Jesus is, right? I don't know who this Jesus guy is, right? But Yeshua was Call the guy. Call him Yeshua. He was the man. It's supposed to be about him. Mm -hmm. Very little of the book, if you really, really read it, is about him, right? The Bible, you're saying. Correct. Mm -hmm. And the people who actually executed him were the people who crafted the, the Bible, Bible and took a lot out and put this in. Yeah, there's word for word. There's word for word translations, and then there's thought for thought translations. Then there's some with both. It's a benefit to have multiple translations. Yeah, I agree with you, but I'm saying like even in like the quote unquote word for word translations, there's so much there there's still so much beauty in the language of the original scriptures that you just you can't translate it into English because we don't have we don't have the means to express and communicate that. And that's not a bad thing. That's not a bad thing. But to look at it and say that that's a negative thing is crazy. Like, I don't understand that argument. I get it. I get why people use that. And that's a common argument that's used by atheists as well. But like that was the language that God wanted it written in because that 
captured the essence of those scriptures. And not to say that we're missing anything, but it's just, it's hard to fully transfer that into English when we don't have literal alternatives to what they were saying. But that doesn't mean that you can't trust the Bible. The Bible is trustworthy. The Bible that we have in English is trustworthy. That doesn't mean that you can't trust it, but with all language, there's nuance across all different types of languages. There's beauty in certain languages and there's complexity and there's depth of language and words and vocabulary that you simply can't completely transfer over into English. It's just not gonna work. But that doesn't mean that you can't trust your Bible in English. It is still 100% trustworthy. But people don't really understand that or they don't wanna understand that or they wanna use that as, as an argument to try to sow seeds of, of doubt. You feel me? And they also added extra things in it to appease their people, the Romans in particular, to make that transition from pagan to monotheism, mm -hmm. to keep their traditions in there so they were, it was comfortable for them, right? Because there's things in the Bible, well, not in the Bible, there's things in Christianity, for instance, that have nothing to do with anything. Like Christmas has nothing to do with anything. Yeah. The tradition of Christmas has a lot to do with other cultures mm -hmm. that were contrary to the teachings of Yeshua. Mm -hmm. Easter have nothing to do with the man. It was counter what Yeshua taught. Well, you feel with me? consumerism and merchandiseism and capitalism gets infused to religion. All of this is bad. Let's right? sell some Easter eggs. All of this is bad. Yeah. All of this is bad. So anyway, what we are uh, bringing about, right? People can believe whatever they want, right? Yeah. It doesn't matter to me, right? Belief is is to attach yourself to a notion that you don't know is true or not. Mm -hmm. That's fine. I don't think that's logical, but it's okay. Whatever makes people happy. But what I'm trying to do is nothing but placing forward practical things that people can employ into their lives. Mm -hmm. And if they do it, they will ascend into their real God energy, their God mm -hmm. body, do their God a, culture. Do you have a Ten Commandments of the infinite no, no. God body? It's anything? not. Okay, so the promise is you do these things that I'm going to tell you to do and you become God. Got it. What else? What shall we do? Tell us. Like that? This is not to replicate these things. Oh, no, your own. This it could is, be two it's, commandments, it's, ten commandments, five, I mean, six. A, no, no, because I didn't, I didn't like my. And here's the thing. I don't want to be God, bro. I'm chilling. I don't want to be God. I don't want that. I have a very extreme level of comfort knowing that God's on the throne and I'm in this seat. I don't want to be there. I don't want to be God. I don't want that. Anyone who wants that, who is has a desire in their heart to want to be God, bro, that's the spirit of Antichrist. That's the spirit of rebellion. That's the same reason why Lucifer got kicked out of heaven because he wanted the worship. He wanted to be in that position. I don't want that. I don't want that. It's a scary thought that people actually aspire to want that. Well, however you want to take it. Like if you want to take it literal or you want to take it like, oh, well, I don't mean you're, you're literally going to be God, but you're going to be a, a quote unquote God version of yourself. I don't even want that, bro. I just, God's going to be God, bro. I'm, I'm going to be his child. I'm going to be his son. That's, I'm straight. I'm chilling, bro. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. We are, we are a royal priesthood. I'm good. A royal priesthood. I'm chilling. What did Jesus say? He said, many mansions. He said, there's going to be many mansions in my father's house for you. If it wasn't so, why would I say it, bro? He didn't actually say that, but <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't understand. Bro, we are royalty. We are. Children of God. You have your faith in Jesus Christ. If you are a child of the Most High, if you have your faith in Jesus Christ, we are royalty, a royal priesthood. All this other stuff that he's talking about, bro, <laughs> that's going to end you up with Lucifer. And y'all, you and Lucifer can go and chill out and be sizzling, and y'all could talk about how your strategy went wrong and now you, 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 you're burning in hell. Actually, Lucifer is going to be laughing at you 
because he already knows what's up. He's going to be laughing at you that he was able to uh, deceive you and trick you into thinking that you could actually ascend to that to that level of 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 quote unquote being a god. It's just it's it's very silly. It's all very silly. It's all very silly. It after that, it's mm -hmm. its own unique thing. What are the foundations of it? What are the fundamentals? The, I mean, it's a lot. It's a lot. That's a thing. Yeah. But the main thing is this, right? It's simple. <laughs> Life's what you make it. The main thing is life is what you make it. The main thing is it has everything to do with. The human mind creating all reality, literally and philosophically, right? Mm -hmm. Because your life is a sum total of all the decisions that you make. Yes. Mm -hmm. It has nothing, your, your wins or failures have nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with you, yep. right? So, and this is what I'm giving people. And once people really understand that and accept that and let it, like, take that seed and plant it and mm -hmm. let it grow, mm -hmm. if you're wise enough, you're going to live a good life because you're going to do the things to take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. You're going to do the things to make yourself uh, a valuable word you are. You're going to do the things that make yourself healthy to make yourself wise, to make yourself powerful, all of the things, right? Women will align themselves with intelligent, strong, powerful men. Men will- What are the things, Mike? Will, you know, reciprocate, and men will, you know, rise into that divine masculine to, to qualify themselves for these incredible women. The, it, the amalgamation of the divine masculine and, and feminine will, will permeate, and it'll be a better place. It will be a better place. There are, uh, I do have a lot of solutions to the problems of our modern society hmm. in the book, right? Listen, we live in a wild place. It's wild. We live in a way that is not. Look, all right, our programming is to um, to pass on our, our DNA, our genes, right? Mm -hmm. our, our create progeny so that our, our species can survive. Mm -hmm. But what we're doing is contrary to that. How we are living, mm -hmm. right? We're going to wipe ourselves out. It's going to happen. You feel me? It, it's, it's so many routes. It's so many ways, so many things that we're doing that's going to wipe us out. Animals don't do this. Now, we may look at animals as simple and uh, they don't have, uh, uh, you know, the degree of consciousness that we have. They don't have the neurons or the frontal lobe, but they're not doing things to wipe out their species. Hmm. We are. So hopefully we can, you know, this book, maybe not in my lifetime or my kid's lifetime or whatever, but somebody's going to be like, you know what? We're really f***ing up. Let's employ this right here. Right? I have every specific things in the yeah. book. Uh, about different problems. One more society. question, because I, I, I want to cover a few other topics with you. But okay. you said something earlier. Mm -hmm. You talked about the concept of jihad. You mm -hmm. know, which. So I guess he already wrote his version of the Bible, quote unquote, his version of the Bible. Hold on. There's a chapter that says, "I am God." Hold on. What is this? Like this. I say, "I'm a, a peace God." They say, "Peace God" to me. I recognize them as a God. I'm giving them their respect. The ones that know who they are, right? Listen, you read, read your... This that whole peace be to the gods talk, talk that we talked about. This whole peace to the gods thing. Bro, I don't know what it is, man. Like... It seems like it's becoming a more and more attractive temptation for people to fall into this lie that they're gods. And I think that just speaks to the times that we're living in. I think that just speaks to these later days that we're living in, that we have this much rebellion and that we have this much pride and that we have this much love of self. Because that's what the scriptures say. There's going to be a love of self that outweighs the love that people have for God. So I guess I can't say it surprises me that we're seeing this, but it's just so interesting that people actually subscribe to this and that are going to, you know, buy the book and they're going to follow it when he's taking bits and pieces from the truth and he's giving you a bunch of lies packaged as a modern quote unquote truth. Like, bro, just follow the scriptures, follow the Bible, get to know God. It's all in there. And furthermore, we all have access, direct access to God. You know, people did not used to have direct access to God. You used to have priests that went in, that went into the uh, presence of God and they did it the wrong way, they would die. And now we literally have direct access to God. But yet, 
humans still want to try to find a quote unquote better way. Scripture. If people read scripture, they would all be speaking like that. They don't even read scripture, right? People, and now here's the thing. Yeshua was killed partly for multiple reasons, but one of them, he was at odds with the religious uh, factions that ran things at the time, Pharisees, the Jewish Pharisees. Yeah. And he was at odds with the, the occupying uh, government of Palestine, which was Romans, right? But one thing that the religious Pharisees did not like was him calling himself a God mm -hmm. and telling people that y'all are God. Ye are God. Ye, aren't ye all gods? You know what I'm saying? So they had to get him out of here. What does that mean, right? That can be symbolic and that can be literal. What he's telling people, now there's a lot of nuance in there. There's a book, there's a, what's considered apocryphal gospel called the Gospel of Thomas, which has 140 teachings of Yeshua. Why is that in the Bible? It's weird, but anyway. So there's a lot of nuance to how he was empowering people, right? Mm -hmm. But you just see in the Bible, he's saying he's God and y'all are gods, right? What he's doing is a lot more than that. He's teaching, he's educating, he's leading the way and showing people how to tap into their divine nature, mm -hmm. right? Leading, living by example, okay? So they didn't like that. Just like anybody of note, like one of my spiritual fathers, uh, Minister Farrakhan, he's, he's banned from this, he's banned from that, he's mm -hmm. labeled a racist, he's labeled an anti-Semite, right? And he's never done anything negative to nobody. He, the sum total of his- Yeah, but when he's saying like, you're gods, he's not speaking of divinity. He's not speaking of divinity. That's not what he's speaking of. He's speaking of earth, earthly. On earth, you are gods, little g. For example, the kings, rulers, people who had massive amounts of influence, you are gods of this earth, little g, not divine. I don't, it's like you, you people, are, they, they'll take whatever they want to take. And if they like how it sounds, they'll apply it. And normally it's the things that satisfy the flesh because it's like, oh, I'm a God. You get this false sense of empowerment that you can do whatever you want to do. And that your wicked actions are justified because you're a God. Of his life is not producing violent people, is not drug scandals, is not infidelity scandals, right? He raised was real conservative people real spiritual people, real people who know who they are, they love themselves and they love other people, that's all he's done. But what they do is these, these figureheads or these, these people, these quote unquote gatekeepers, they wanna silence people like Yeshua, like my minister, like other people who are truth tellers, they don't want them out there because they don't want people hearing that. Look, Malcolm X, he was fine until white people started listening to him. Now shut him up, get him out of there. You know what I'm saying? Martin Luther King, you have this image of Martin Luther King, like, oh, like we shall overcome and nah. He really woke up and he started speaking some real truth. They got him out of there. It was more what they would consider radical mm -hmm. and it wasn't super peaceful, right? Get him out of there. They don't want that. JFK was on some real, get him out of there, right? Mm -hmm. This is, and look, here's the thing. We now have the Freedom of Information Act to where we can see like, oh yeah, the government put this stuff together, right? The, and the government's always put these things together. But people are so busy, they're so convoluted, they're so, enthralled with TikTok and in their phones. Yep. Nobody gives a shit. There's UFOs floating around and nobody gives a shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you're, like, you, you, you're like, okay, that's cool. I know, I'll never and I don't think, and going back to, <laughs> yeah, he thinks he's spitting. And going back to what I was saying about like the ye is God's, like ye are God statement. It's like, I don't necessarily, I, I think more so when, when that was said, it was more so of a like, yo, understand you have so much power here on earth Handle it wisely. Handle it wisely. You're not divine, but here on earth, you have a certain status. You have a certain amount of influence, a certain amount of power. Handle it wisely. Don't misuse it. Don't abuse it. Next, forget, before we move on to the next topic, dude, yeah. you're so deep. I'll never forget when I was doing stand-up, I owned a comedy club down in South Beach. Okay, I'm done with this guy. I mean, look, man, I don't... I was going to say I, I, I'm praying for him, but like, bro, I don't, what? What do you want me to say? Like, he believes that stuff, man. I hope he gets out of that. I hope he comes out of that delusion. But if you're going to fall for that, then you're just falling for a spirit of delusion. You're falling for an antichrist spirit. And guess what? You have free will. You can do what you want to do, man. You can do what you want to do. But at the end of the day, there's only one true spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. All these other spirits, imposters.
the Holy Spirit is true. And guess what? You have access to him. Go to him. Seek him. Ask the questions. Bring the doubts to him. Get into relationship with the Holy Spirit. Before it's too late. Because there's going to come a time where it's too late. You ain't going to have the opportunity to do so. Because you got, <laughs> you got finessed by Mike Rashid to go buy his book, to go buy the new Bible. And now you got finessed by Mike Rashid to go buy his new Bible course. And now you got finessed by Mike Rashid to go buy his new Bible, uh, what's it called, retreat or whatever. Now he done finessed you out, you know, $20,000 and you still ain't God. But that's on you. It's sad, but that's on you. You know? <sighs> Man. 